Hey everybody, welcome to The Spotlight. I'm your host, Nick Armstrong. Now when I'm not swabbing my own mouth and examining the contents under this high-powered microscope, I'm constantly searching for the latest news on the people, research, and events here in the Faculty of Science at McMaster University. Today we're in the A.N. Bournes building here at McMaster University, home of the X-ray diffraction facility. Let's go take a look and see what's going on. We're here now with Vicki Jarvis in the X-ray diffraction facility here at McMaster University. Vicki, thanks so much for being here with us today. I have a series of skill testing questions for you to prove to the future scientists out there your vast knowledge of the X-ray world. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. I'm going to name a series of people and you tell me whether they had X-ray vision or not. Superman. Yes. Meteor Man. Yes. Finally, me. Uh, no. Guess again. So Vicky, what is the purpose of the x-ray facility? At the facility we characterize materials, so we take a look at composition and structural properties. Anybody that can grow crystals or has a crystalline material can bring their samples in and find more information about it. We're here in the control room in the X-ray diffraction facility and it's a little known fact that undergraduates actually bring a lot of samples here to have it analyzed by the brilliant minds behind us. Jim, thanks for being here today. Now, a couple questions for you regarding the facilities. In regards to, say, undergraduate work inside the facility, can you enlighten us about that? Well, we rebuilt this facility about uh, three years ago, and we set it up so that we can bring undergraduates, visitors, um, strangers like yourself, uh, into the facility. Uh, we set up a control room where we can run experiments. Visitors, including high school students even, can watch the experiment. We can work with the students there. Jim, what's the machine behind us here? This is called an X-ray diffractometer. It, it has an X-ray source. We put a crystal in front of the X-ray beam, and then there's a CCD camera. It's like a microscope almost. We scatter light off the crystal, put it through a computer algorithm lens, and then see an image of the molecule. That is amazing. I, I'm amazed every time we do it. <laughs> now, on the computer behind me over here, I noticed there's a program running. Could you tell us a little bit about that? There's a program to collect single crystal data. Um, what we're trying to do is take a sample from a student, which is a small crystal like the size of a, a grain of salt you'd put on your fries, and uh, we zap it with x-rays, collect the diffraction pattern, and throw it into a computer algorithm, and up pops a picture of the molecule. If only we had somebody named Hillary to show us a little bit about the program. We do. You do? Uh, uh, we do. <laughs> Great, let's go meet her. I'm now here with Hillary in the control room. I think she's sitting in Vicky's captain's chair. Uh-oh. Hillary, can you tell us a little bit about what you're looking at right now? We're looking here at a crystal that's mounted uh, in the diffractometer. If I just um, spin this little dial around, you can get a better look at the crystal. I'm just giving you a sort of a 360 degree picture of the little crystal that's mounted in the machine. We take a whole series of camera shots of the crystal in different orientations and that gives us a whole series of spots. And if I play the little video, you're looking at each of the frames as they're collected. It takes a lot longer, but we're looking at this sort of in speeded up time. Okay, so if I take all of that data and I do a whole lot of computer gymnastics, press a lot of buttons, etc., etc., ta-da, I can get a picture of the molecule. Wow! <laughs> this is the molecule that gave us all those spots. The molecules grow all together in a whole array and form the crystal. So I can um, expand that a little bit so we can get a whole bunch of the molecules together. I can rotate that around in 3D for you. You can see how all of the molecules pack together. And if you think of this going off into practically infinity, that's all of the molecules that have made up the crystal. And do we know what this is? We actually do, although this has never been solved before, so you are the first people to be seeing this molecule. You're kidding me. I can't wait to tell my mom about this. She might actually be proud of me now. Uh, if I label the atoms here, you can see these are, the purple ones are iodine, the blue ones are nitrogen, gray is carbon, white is hydrogen. Well, that's absolutely amazing. Um, what is this software that you're using? This piece of software is called Mercury, and it's a free download. It lets us take crystallographic files, 
either from the net that are available or it lets us look at our own information, our own data. Well, that is so cool. And uh, Hillary, thanks for taking time to talk with us today. Well, last question, and it's a fun game we like to play here on the Spotlight. It involves you filling in this blank. Science is... Asking questions and looking for the answer. I hope you enjoyed that episode of The Spotlight. To see more episodes of The Spotlight, or to find out more about what's going on in the Faculty of Science at McMaster University, please visit us at www.science.mcmaster.ca slash spotlight. Until next time, I'm your host, Nick Armstrong. Take care, everybody. Remember the time.